Hello fellow cyborgs, I hope you are enjoying the wintry season, but that is in fact the season in which you are dwelling in. Sorry, Southern Hemisphere. Today I have another thematic movie list recommendation video for you, and these are my favorite Christmas movies. I'm sorry about being exclusive about people who don't celebrate Christmas. There are many of you I know and I apologize. I grew up celebrating Christmas and so the festive movies that I enjoy watching this year are all Christmas themed. So if this is not your bag, I'm sorry. Check back next week for another video or watch some of my old ones. But if this sounds interesting to you, then please tag along. Some of these are weird and wacky. Some of them are classics that you probably know about, but all of them permeate my childhood and young adulthood, and I love them so much. I also have a lot here from the silver screen, so 1930s to 1950s movies, because I really, really love that era of filmmaking, and there are quite a few cute, ridiculous Christmas ones. Speaking of weird, the first I have for you is Bell, Book, and Candle. This stars Kim Novak, I think, Think, and definitely James Stewart, one of my husbands. I have many. It's a harem. Anywho, this is counts as Christmas because the opening scene takes place on Christmas Eve. I have very low standards about what qualifies for a Christmas movie. Most of them are going to be more thematic than this, but anyway, 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 you should see this movie regardless. It's about witches and cats and antiques, and most importantly, it is a dialogue about love. It starts out with Kim Novak, who is a witch, the witchiest witch of her coven clan family, and she's decided that she really likes the look of that James Stewart man, so she puts a spell on him, and then she has to deal with the consequences. It's a little bit Little Mermaid-y, a little bit kind of, because in the fact that when you love a mortal, poop goes down. I made that sound like a weird poop storm of you don't know what, but, but please, my incoherency really does not do it justice. Check it out if you want a cute, witchy, a little bit Christmassy. Far more thematic is White Christmas, starring Bing Crosby and Rosemary Clooney, among others. This is a very highly Christmas-themed musical. Bing Crosby's character and his partner met each other in the war, and now they're great stage acts, amazing crooners. And they meet up with Rosemary Clooney's character and her sister, who are also doing a sister act in the different clubs. And then they're past the line, and they have to join together to try to save the inn of Bing Crosby's wartime commander. There is a scene at the very end that makes me cry because the commander is crying me. And of course it has the wonderful like misunderstanding blow up twist like most romantic comedies. A lot of the traditional Christmas songs that we hear actually had to be written by someone. I'm pretty sure that Bing Crosby wrote White Christmas. However, it did not premiere in White Christmas. It premiered in the Holiday Inn, which is another movie that I super adore. This stars Bing Crosby, Fred Astaire. They also do an act in nightclubs. Bing Crosby sings and Fred Astaire dances to try to woo the woman that dances and sings between them. And she's originally engaged to Bing, but spoilers, though it's not a really big spoiler, I mean, like, whatever. She's actually having an affair with Fred Astaire. So Bing Crosby throws up his hands to show business and goes to run a farm in Vermont, New Hampshire, Connecticut, one of those places up in the Northeast of America. And then he realizes that he hates it, that it's terrible. And so he decides to turn his farm into the Holiday Inn, which is only open on holidays. So Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, Abraham Lincoln's birthday. There is some a really bad blackface moment in this, but I just kind of swallow it and continue on with the movie. The main plot of this is that Bing Crosby discovers a wonderful singer to partner with him at Holiday Inn, and one evening Fred Astaire comes to Holiday Inn and decides that she is his perfect dance partner and he must figure out who she is. And then Bing Crosby, of course, doesn't want her to go into show business. He loves her and he wants her to stay with him at the farm. Meh! I'm sorry if I gave a lot of the plot away, but you know, the plot is not the charm of this movie. 
It also has White Christmas the song in it. As I said, it's got this really cool meta moment, which is, you know, meta. It's a thing that we say these days and it makes an impact, so I said it. Anyway, The Holiday Inn. I hope you give it a try. It's lovely. It's one of my favorites. Next is Love Actually, a wonderful Christmas but not overload Christmas movie. If you haven't seen Love Actually yet, you totally have to. Also, please see the like DVD version and not the made for TV version because there's a really funny series of vignettes with Martin Freeman from Sherlock. So this movie follows many different sets of couples around in in the four weeks leading up to Christmas and their different kinds of love stories and all the couples end up being connected to everyone else like in a line like someone from this couple knows someone from this couple who then knows someone from this couple. It has the likes of Emma Thompson, Alan Rickman, Martin Freeman, Kira Knightley, Colin Firth. Yeah, it, you know, it's got people in it whose faces people normally like seeing. And you should watch it because love actually. Next up on the list is another from the silver screen. This is Shop Around the Corner starring James Stewart again, but much younger and more adorable and Margaret Sullivan. This is the inspiration for You've Got Mail, one of my favorite movies ever. This is a Christmas movie because it takes place in Budapest in Hungary, where it's really snowy and the final scene happens Hi, yes, yes, on Christmas Eve or around there, something like that. So the premise of this story, the setup, this sort of story, two people are anonymously writing letters to one another and fall in love. And who am I in love with? I don't know, blah. It's the ultimate pen pal sort of setup. And this movie is really wonderful. Please watch it, please watch it, please watch it. Next is a movie that my mom found somewhere, somehow, Santa Ann Pete. This is a more religious movie. It's about Santa as Saint Nicholas and how he started out in the Netherlands delivering toys and sweets to kids and then how he eventually makes his way over to America. And most importantly, it's about his helper, Pete, who is a Moor. So yay, African-American representation and Christmas stuff. This is a really sweet kind of corny movie. It's, I guess, loosely based historically because St. Nicholas was an actual dude, but then we've also got Santa. It explains some of the Santa mythology, like his red suit and the reindeer and what else? Stockings. <sighs> So it's, it's nice, it's refreshing. It's also got James Earl Jones narrating it cause it's told in a sort of like, grandpa, tell me the story of Pete. Okay, I will tell you the story child. And then you flash to like the live action Santa and Pete sort of scenes. Yeah, oh, it's one of the best. It's so good. It's also based off of a book which I've read but I don't remember anything about it. So if you want to check out the book, do 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 do, Santa and Pete. Next is another silver screen. This is Christmas in Connecticut. This is a ridiculous movie, ridiculous. The premise of this is that there is this woman writing an article in a magazine about her country farm and how it's just wonderful and she just had a baby and it's amazing and she's this best cook and everyone loves this column. But she actually lives in New York City. She lives in a big city and can't cook to save her life. All of her cooking recipes come from her chef friend who who runs a restaurant that I think she lives above. Uh, that chef friend is so hilarious. Hunky dunky, oh, he's amazing. Anyway, the kerfuffle, how the plot moves on in this movie is that her editor, who doesn't realize that she's lying, is like, oh, this war hero just came back and we want you to host him and cook him a real country Christmas banquet. Won't that be amazing? Ah, oh, the feels! And she's just like, I could tell, mm -hmm. has to create, create this Connecticut farm and a child and a husband. And it's just, whoop, 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 whoop. but it's got a really cute romance to it. The wounded war hero is really hot. If you know, I gotta be serious about it. And it like she, I don't watch the movie for her because she's kind of an idiot. I watch the movie for the war hero. I think his name's Dennis Morgan. I could get that wrong, but yeah. <sighs> And also the chef 
who's hysterical. He's Hungarian, Romanian, something like that. He's funny. So check this out if you want like a really ridiculous, lighthearted, funny Christmas movie. On a similar vein, ridiculous, funny Christmas movie, Christmas with the Cranks. This is actually one of my favorites. Like I think it might be my favorite Christmas movie. It's the movie each year, or at least in the last few, that I've been most looking forward to seeing. I have no idea why, like it's not the best. It stars Tim Allen and Jamie Lee Curtis and the premise is that their daughter is going into the, Be the Peace Corps and is going to miss Christmas. And they decide we're not doing it. We are going to skip Christmas this year. We're going to go on a cruise. We're going to forget that our daughter is not with us in the holiday season. And because they decide to do this, there's outrage at the office. Their neighbors are just like, but what about the Christmas party you give us? How could you not do the traditions? Blah. So it's just really goofy. And then you, you already guessed the twist, right? At the end, their daughter decides to come home for Christmas and they have to scrap everything together. I really like the movie because Tim Allen and Jamie Lee Curtis are really funny. It still incenses me how the people around them judge them for not wanting to partake in the holiday season. It's just like, mind your own business. Don't you guys have other like things taking up your energy besides just hating us, but apparently not. And it's also a story that where like their neighbors are the sorts <sighs> They, they're the epitome of neighbors. They're like the annoying people that you just kind of want to murder with like a show, snow shovel, but also the ones that'll have your back when you really need them. Meh. So it's, eh, yeah. That one's also based on a book called Skipping Christmas. Haven't read it, don't want to. Moving on. The Nutcracker Prince. This is a very beloved childhood movie of mine. So it is an animated movie with voice actors like Kiefer Sutherland, I know, wow, uh, of the Nutcracker Ballet. And the thing that I love about this is that even though it kind of is like ruinous, they create lyrics for Tchaikovsky's original scores. So like the dun 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 da da. She says like, if you could see me now. It's ridiculous. It's a kid's movie. There's the creepiest rat king. And oh, there's like, oh, heartbreaking. The the bit in the ballet where they're doing the pas de deux, which is like the, like they have the finale where the prima ballerina and the prima ballerino are dancing and it's awesome and ridiculous. And it's just building like sorrowful kind of music. They they totally make it sorrowful in the movie and it just breaks my heart. That movie is why I love the music from Tchaikovsky's The Nutcracker and then consequently why I love that ballet when it's done properly with more than just 12 six-year-olds and one 13-year-old. So yeah, if you can get your hands on this, I recommend you give it a try. It's just, <laughs> I really like it and it's got a happy ending too. Shh. Another kid movie that I think will be more divisive than The Nutcracker Prince is The Polar Express. A lot of people think that the animation style in The Polar Express is super creepy. And I, I totally understand. It's definitely bordering that unlikely valley, uncan uncanny valley, where it's just a little too lifelike and a little not lifelike enough and it tiptoes that horrible like ventriloquist dummy sort of sector. I get it. Fortunately for me, it doesn't spoil the movie for me. So the premise of this movie, if you don't know, this boy he, at Christmas time, he's starting to doubt that Santa is real. I think he's about nine, 10, something like that. And then suddenly pulls up in his backyard. This is based off of another book, by the way, haven't read it yet, will eventually. This train pulls up in, in his backyard and it's the Polar Express. And the engineer says, well, are you coming? And the boy has to decide whether or not he should get on this magical, questionable, maybe kidnapping train to go see Santa. It's a wonderful movie about belief and faith, I guess, kind of. And there are so many good songs. Blah! 
Oh, it's so good. And then I thought that their depiction of Santa was really great. There are so many heartwarming mo moments in this. It's also about friendship. It kind of talks a little bit about like poor versus middle class and what that means as far as like believing in Santa and everything like that. It's got Tom Hanks as like the voices of like everybody. And the main character is called Hero Boy because he doesn't have a name. I think he looks like a Travis. That might just be me though. Anyway, The Polar Express, one of my most heartwarming Christmas movie loves. Last but not least is The Muppets Christmas Carol, because why not? So you probably understand what this is about if you've seen any Muppet adaptation, any Muppet anything. It's they're taking the basic plot of the Christmas Carol and putting singing and Muppets and the man who plays Scrooge is Michael Caine. It's just a romping good time, really funny. My favorite movie adaptation of A Christmas Carol, though I haven't seen many of them, skip the Jim Carrey version, just no. Yeah, it's just a walloping good time and you get to see all of your Muppet friends and Kermit is Cratchit. Ah, it's just so good. And the oh, Christmas Carol, Tiny Tim gets me every time. Every bloomin' time gets me. Another nice uh, Christmas Carol adaptation is Mickey's Christmas Carol, which also has a really, really, really heartbreaking Tiny Tim scene. Oh my goodness, okay. I think that's enough for you guys. I could uh, be wrong. That was quite a few. I've probably been blathering on for a long time by now. Watching Christmas movies is like the one sacred Christmas tradition for me. Even when I was away from home at university for like the weeks leading up to Christmas, I think one year I went home on the 21st because it's just how things happened. What I did to not like want to die of homesickness in those weeks was watch Christmas movies. And fortunately for me, I have a copious number of them. And also my library happened to have a lot. And also I looked on Turner Classic Movies. I think that's where I found White Christmas and everything like that. Anyway, I hope that you have enjoyed my list of Christmas movie recommendations. Please let me know in the comments down below if you have seen any of these, if you have any other recommendations for me. I didn't give you an exhaustive list, just the tastes that I most enjoy. If you have any recommendations for me though, I would greatly appreciate it. And if you see any of these upon my recommendation, please let me know how they went with you. I would love to know that I'm not poisoning people's minds with false information. Think, think, thank you for watching, and until next time, watch yourself some amazing seasonal movies and continue to be lovely. Hello, fellow cyborgs, and welcome to another thematic.